This crossover Thursday episode of Locked On Eagles and Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the promo code in all lowercase locked on NFL for your first deposit match up to $100. We thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles and Locked On Cardinals your first listen each and every day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Louis DiBiase, host of Locked On Eagles, joined by Alex Clancy of Locked On Cardinals, Eagles Cardinals this Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field, a 1 p.m. kickoff. The Eagles 11-4 and coming off a Christmas Day win over the New York Giants. The Arizona Cardinals right now 3-12. and uh, Alex, uh, the very different styles of teams right now in very different positions, but I think both have a lot to play for on Sunday. Yeah, you know, Cardinals have to play for who's going to be on this roster in 2024. That's pretty much the extent of where we are this season. And that, I guess, needs to include Kyler Murray at this point. Um, I'm still in the camp uh, that Kyler Murray's the guy. Um, Them drafting the top two, I tweeted out after the game, after them losing and after New England winning, which thrusted the Cardinals up to the number two spot that, the quarterback conversation has gotten more complicated. I don't think that means that they're going to move off from Kyler Murray. It's just new stuff has come to light, man. You know, things are things are different now, and I think that's what we're going to need to kind of see if Kyler Murray can take advantage of a Philadelphia Eagles defense that has been had at times this year, uh, namely, you know, Tyrod Taylor last week, that just to show proof of concept for him for the future. Yeah, I think it's interesting because the Cardinals, I think, heading into the year, most thought were going to be the worst team in the league or maybe the Mm -hmm. betting favorite for that. And everybody thought they were tanking. Kyler was going to be out for a while. And it was all about Caleb Williams. Like, that was the focus. But I think even though their record is 3-12, and Alex, and like you said, they're still set up to get one of those quarterback prospects in this coming draft class if they want it. I think most were surprised about how competitive they were under Jonathan Gannon in his first year as head coach, even though – a lot of those games resulted in losses. A lot of those games they could have won. And then Kyler Murray comes back, and he's been competitive with Arizona. He is under that contract. So, yeah, it's kind of an interesting spot. It's not like Kyler Murray is some bridge quarterback that has no chance of being the long-term guy. I mean, that was the first overall pick in 2019 that has a lot of the traits you need. And so it's an interesting kind of dilemma for the Cardinals with the a GM and coach that, of course, didn't draft him. But – Again, do you want to hit the reset button? Where would you lean? Like, I know you were talking about how you believe Kyler could still be the guy. Do you think they believe that with a few weeks to go in this season? And would they be able to change their mind if he continues to impress? That's the question, man. I mean, the question is, and I I would never prognosticate. I would never try and guess. It's the only people that know are the owner, Jonathan Gannon, and uh, and Monty Osford. But gauging what metric to – you know, utilize in an effort to determine if Kyler Murray is the guy, if they don't already know one way or the other already. Everything has happened up until this point. He's the guy. Jonathan Gannon loves him. Monty Osfort loves him. One of Jonathan Gannon's yeah. quotes coming in in his introductory press conferences, not many teams that have, they're that going through a rebuild, have their franchise quarterback on the roster. Sure. Yeah. So it's something that it's, it's a, it's an oblong spot. Kyler Murray could not have gotten injured at the worst. And I know that you never want anybody to get injured. Every time his injury is bad, he could not have gotten injured at a worse time because this sample size with this depleted roster, obviously playing for 2024 and beyond with new regime, new everything, it's difficult to determine on if he's the guy. But by all accounts, he is. And I think that that's going to be the guy moving forward. And Jonathan Gannon, obviously one of the biggest stories, probably the biggest story about this game specifically, is Jonathan Gannon going back to his old stomping ground from last year where you know they made it to the Super Bowl. And Jonathan Gannon has changed the face of this organization on the field overnight. I mean, yeah, it, and it was a difficult task because of Cliff right. Kingsbury. We're in our Twitter DMs all the time. You see what I've seen, what I've said about Cliff Kingsbury for four years. Oh, yeah. It's different now. It's an upgrade, and that's a beautiful thing for the Cardinals. And I think it's interesting. The Jonathan Gannon storyline is definitely one Eagles fans are interested in as well. And it feels personal on this side. I thought Gannon had some success over his two years as defensive coordinator. Of course, last year, that defense was incredible. But I think Eagles fans, if you ask them about Jonathan Gannon, and take it with a grain of salt, some fans have issues with coordinators every year. That's just kind of how it was with Jim Schwartz, too. But I will say there is some reason for Eagles fans and the team itself to be a little bit upset, I thought. You know, people expected Gannon to be the coordinator again this year. After they won the NFC title, he told the local news station in an interview he wasn't going anywhere. Um, The Eagles weren't aware, it sounds like, of the interview he had with the Cardinals. 
And of course, that kind of cost them Vic Fangio at the time. He had already accepted a job with the Dolphins, so they Mm -hmm. were scrambling to then bring in Sean Desai, who we now know the Eagles have fired in place of Matt Patricia. So I think, you know, Alex, whether you think it's warranted or not, and I always had some issues with Gannon, too, and some of his, his schemes and philosophical beliefs for a defense in the NFL, but... I think regardless of what you think, it definitely is a kind of a revenge game or something that Eagles fans kind of want to get back at JG. Yeah. And it's interesting. You know, it, this is, it's a business, man. He got flack for the Joshua Dobbs thing where they said they weren't going to trade him and then they moved him. Right. Who cares? He's a seventh round. It doesn't matter. Like uh, these things, it's a business. Okay. It's a business. Joshua Dobbs served his purpose here. They moved on. Kyler Murray was coming back. Stop it. With what Josh, with what Jonathan Gannon has done for the Arizona Cardinals, okay, sure, scheme, whatever. Nick Rallis, you know, you, obviously your former linebackers coach is now the DC with the Cardinals. That's going to be Nick Rallis' show. Jonathan Gannon helps with play calling, okay, but what I equated Jonathan Gannon to be taking this job is the president and all the coordinators being his ca- his cabinet, where he's the face. But everybody's doing this together all for the first time with Drew Patsy and Nick Rallis both being, you know, first time offensive coordinators. What Jonathan Gannon has done is, is added stability, a face to lead, and a culture shift that a dysfunctional organization like the Cardinals needed more than anything. So he may not be the perfect head coach. He may not be the best head coach to come out of the coordinator room from Philadelphia this year. But he was the perfect choice for the Cardinals with where they were at that time. And I think that the rest will just grow. So yeah, listen, it's a business. I know that, you know, the, the Super Bowl second half wasn't, he wasn't See, I was gonna, I'm more upset about Gannon in the Super Bowl. I think yeah. at times throughout the years, he just right. never felt like he had an answer for really good quarterbacks. That's my problem more than how the whole process at the end happened. Because again, you're going for a head coaching job. If that comes out last second, it's hard to blame somebody in that situation. For me, it was more of just his kind of scheme and what I like in a defense that was different. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I I think he, again, has made the Cardinals way more competitive than I thought they were going to be this year, Alex. And for the Eagles, you look at their side, it's like they're 11 and four and it feels like the complete opposite of Arizona situation. But with just two weeks left, they're still trying to figure out who they were, who they are. I mean, they lost three games straight. And, you know, last Monday, they just beat the Giants and they kind of let them back in that football game. So they're still they have a chance to be the one seed. They're likely going to win the division still. And, you know, they they're still everything. And you look at the NFL this year, everybody has been Jekyll and Hyde. So they absolutely can still win a Super Bowl. But it doesn't feel like they're the dominant force that was expected that we at least expected to make it back to the NFC title or Super Bowl. Now it's like, if you if they lost in the first or second round, would you be surprised? No. If they won the Super Bowl, would you be surprised? No. So they're just way more unpredictable than I think we had expected. Yeah, and I think that this is a perfect. You know, we go through this and we have this pact of you never want the team to lose that you're coming. You never want it to lose. You always go out and try and win every game. And of course, these are employees who are trying to keep their job. Okay. Like, let's be honest. Nobody's nobody's thanking the NFL. This could be and is a perfect time for this game. A get right game. If you could name two corners for the Arizona Cardinals, I will give you a high five through this. I was going to ask you who they are. (laughs) Cool. We can talk about that in the next segment with matchups because this is like, I don't know if Jalen Hurts could shatter his passing record on Sunday. Okay. So that'll benefit them for a get right game, which is most likely what's going to happen. And the Cardinals are playing a juggernaut. And they're going to stand pat probably at three wins and, and solidify their stance at the number two overall pick. They're going to try and like, that's just, that's just where we are week 17 in 2023. So I think it's a perfect time for both teams to be playing this game when it's all said and done. We're going to get into the matchups coming up next. Eagles Cardinals this Sunday at 1 PM. Louis DiBiase of lockdown Eagles, Alex Clancy of lockdown Cardinals. This is crossover Thursday. This episode of Lockdown Eagles and Lockdown Cardinals is brought to you by Prize Picks Daily Fantasy. You can win up to 25 times your money this football season. All you got to do is select two or more players, pick more or less than their projected stats, and place your entry. And listen to this with the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League. It's a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. So, for example, you could take LeBron James and let's say Devontae Smith this week at a 10 and a half combo of three points made and receptions. 
so much change in the game over at Prize Picks. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each and every week. And it doesn't stop there. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. So for football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So head over to prizepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL and use our code LockedOnNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL, promo code locked on NFL for your first deposit match up to $100. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles and Lockdown Cardinals your first listen each and every day. It's crossover Thursday, and guys, want to let you know too, Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. So, Lockdown Sports Today, they're here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the league with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. Louis DiBiase of Lockdown Eagles, Alex Clancy of Lockdown Cardinals, getting you ready for a 1 p.m. kickoff this Sunday between the 11 and 4 Philadelphia Eagles, the 3 and 12 Arizona Cardinals. And Alex, you kind of were hinting at it at the end of segment one, talking about how. You know, most likely, and this is how I feel too, it's a get-right game for the Eagles. I think they have the favorable matchups for the majority of these spots on both sides of the ball. Um, but at the same time, the Eagles have made things close for teams because they turn the football over a lot. They have a lot of mistakes with penalties. Their defense can be had. And even if you're a bad team like Arizona, if you have a Kyler Murray type of talent, though, on offense, the Eagles have – allowed those kind of teams to stay close. So I don't think it's going to be a blowout, but I think, again, when you look at the matchups, most of them are in favor of Philly. Yeah. And the biggest one is the corner versus wide receiver whole right. thing. I agree. Um, AJ Brown's really good. Um, Devontae Smith is, he's really good. Um, it's an understatement. Yeah. Dallas Goddard is really good. Um <laughs> They've got they've got some players and the Cardinals don't have corners. Uh, they just released Marco Wilson, their former fourth, fourth round pick, at a twenty twenty uh, in twenty twenty one. Um, their starting corners, as we speak, are Antonio Hamilton Jr. and rookie Garrett Williams, who missed last week out of Syracuse. Um, if he doesn't go to be Starling Thomas, the Cardinals on purpose only focused on a couple position groups this offseason, and the cornerback room wasn't one of them. They have money coming up. They have two first round picks as of now. I mean, it may bolster. We have no idea. Um, so that's going to change. But that's the biggest matchup for me is this could be a perfect storm bloodbath for this secondary. Regardless of how good Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson are and have been, they can only cover up so many holes in a defense devoid sure. of pass rush and cornerback talent at this point. What about you? I, I mean, so yeah, some I of mean. The- I think there's a lot of them. And I look at, for me right now, obviously, yes, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith against those corners. That's the one thing that's been working for the Eagles offense all year. I think new offensive coordinator Brian Johnson, it's been a very vanilla scheme. He does not like to use a lot of pre-stamp motion. I feel like his route trees have been pretty basic this year. So they've been winning in spite of scheme on offense. It's been more just those star players willing them to production. And that's been Brown and Smith more than anybody because even Dallas Goddard, he started off slow this year, then he got injured. So it's really been Smith, Brown, and Hertz carrying this offense all year. And even the run game has been uncharacteristically up and down compared to the last two years under Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts. So that's definitely one that it's definitely a strength against a weakness that the Eagles are going to try to exploit. For me, though, one area the Eagles normally are elite and have been great at times this year with, but lately they've just been non-existent, is their defensive line, is the pass rush. Can they get pressure on Kyler Murray, stop him from getting outside the pocket, creating outside of structure? Because that's where the Eagles have struggled this year. If you look at, you know, specifically that game against Josh Allen, they really, Allen held onto the football and it killed the Eagles because their secondary, while they're getting some nice rejuvenated play from younger guys like rookie Keely Ringo out of Georgia, um, Alabama undrafted free agent Eli Ricks, uh, rookie safety Sidney Brown, who was a third round pick. Like these guys under Matt Patricia, he's been playing more of the young defensive backs. They've been even better than like a James Bradbury and Darius Slay is injured too. So it's been the young kids and they've played well. But if Kyler gets outside of the pocket, holds onto the ball and can make things happen down the field, 
that's where the Eagles have really gotten hurt over the last month. And the pass rush has just not been good enough. And there's no excuse because that's where Howie Roseman, the Eagles GM has invested all his resources. Like the mm-hmm. fact that Josh sweat doesn't have a sack in a month and a half just makes no sense. Rookie Jalen Carter has kind of cooled off over the last month. Hassan Riddick's really been the only guy that's been carrying when it comes to sack production. And again, it's like they've got Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, another first round pick in Nolan Smith. They need to hit home and start producing because if not, as promising as these younger kids have been in the secondary, as better as it's been the last two weeks, they're not the strength of that defense. You can't win because of those guys. you got to win because of this defensive line. And so this is a matchup normally they struggle with. So can they get to Kyler Murray and contain him? Yeah, um, and adding Shaq Leonard just, just for fun, you know, <laughs> who lived in the backfield last week. Um, yeah, he, seven, seven tackles and a sack, but the, the free the – free, uh, I should say the last two games before that, not ideal. So linebacker, yeah. I'm not going to say is a strength of the Eagles right now. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and you know, with the Cardinals, the, the left side of the offensive line has been the problem entire season. Uh, DJ Humphreys is officially hit that wall where it's, he's no longer a viable left tackle. Um, they put Kelvin Beecham over there when DJ Humphreys has been hurt. He's, you know, ancient at this point, Elijah Wilkerson just came off IR. who was a starting left guard. Who's been awful. They've been, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been really tough to watch and, and it's uh it's something like uh, Jalti Frohold was a, a free a free agent signing this year. We thought he may not even make it through camp. It would be a backup center. If John Gaines, rookie, was going to start. John Gaines goes down, and Jalti Frohold just takes over, and he's been great. He's been great. Now, watching, you know, seeing Fletcher Cox and Jalen Carter just punish the A gap when you have guards that can't hold their weight, it's going to be problematic. And Kyler Murray, like one of my favorite things that I've that I say, and I haven't had to say it really as of late because the offensive line has been fine with Paris Johnson Jr., first round pick holding his weight on the right side with all the front sevens the Cardinals have played this year. The best offensive line the Arizona Cardinals have is Kyler Murray's legs. And that's just it. That's it. And, and we saw flashes of old Kyler Murray against Chicago. Uh, He hasn't looked great. They've they're two and three with him. He's played okay in both wins. He's played not so great in the losses, but he had 240 yards and two touchdowns coming off an ACL with no offensive weapons, zero. Hollywood Brown's out. They've got everybody's under 5'9 that he's throwing the ball to. And aside from Trey McBride, who's going to be the stud, you're going to, that's going to be the matchup that you're going to have to stop to keep the yeah. Cardinals. And James Conner, obviously, those are, you're playing the hits with those guys. But if Kyler Murray can put together 350 all purpose yards and a couple touchdowns, I don't see like if the Cardinals win on Sunday before as we pivot here, like I wouldn't be shocked. It's not like I was shocked when Joshua Dobbs beat the Cowboys by a hundred in week three. Sure. Like I was shocked at that. With what what's happened with I don't know, Jalen Hurts throws a couple tip balls that get intercepted, and the Cardinals, you know, like crazier things have happened than the Cardinals winning a game like this, but a lot of things would have to go right. I think one other matchup, and it's not one when it comes to personnel on the field, but the battle between Jonathan Gannon, his defense, and then Nick Sirianni and Brian Johnson's offense. These are guys that all know each other very well. They know Mm -hmm. how their units worked. They've worked together now for the last few years. I think Gannon, again, you look at at least what he did in Philadelphia. I haven't watched as much Cardinals football this year, but normally he was very hell-bent on stopping the deep passing game. And I feel like that's been how defenses are going about defending the Eagles because they know – that's been their bread and butter this year. And they've almost forced the issue at times, which is what's caused a lot of these turnovers. And they haven't been as patient. They haven't been as balanced with the run game. They've barely ever used the middle of the field, despite guys like AJ Brown and Dallas Scott are being at their disposal. So I feel like the Eagles have been trying to force that issue. And when you look at Gannon, at least what he did in Philadelphia was try to stop that area. So can the Eagles mm-hmm. stay patient, take what that defense is going to give them and then take your shot when it's there. But They've got to get back to the quick passing game. You've got run after the catch monsters, AJ Brown, mm-hmm. Dale Scott, or Devontae Smith. So yep. I think that's going to be a key is just watching that battle with, between the coaches who know each other very well. Yeah, this is, I'm not looking forward to this one <laughs> because, because then, listen, and, 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 and this is, I say all the NFL in 2023 has been just the most unpredictable. So yeah, you it's have bonkers. no idea. It's yeah. bonkers. Now, like one thing that I will say, like, all year, all offseason, ever since they hired Jonathan Gannon, all through this season, I've been speaking in the abstract with future pacing things. Like, this rookie played very well today. This veteran played well doing this today. Sure. Nick Rallis had a nice package with this today. And it's – with Jonathan Gannon and scheming and things like that, it's knowing when to use your timeouts, penalties, and having a team prepared to play. Those are three things that Cliff Kingsbury never did. And I don't say that as a joke. 
Like this team, regardless of how talented, we're not prepared on game day. Jonathan sure. Gannon has players prepared on game day like we haven't seen in the last four seasons. So the scheme that you're talking about, yes, it's important. And unfortunately, the abstract that I've been living, the world that I've been living in for the last 10 months lends to more green ribbon wins as pertaining to scheme than just keeping, you know, uh, keeping the Eagles under a 30 burger or something. Yeah. You know, getting after Jalen Hurts, making him make a mistake. Right. You know, keeping A.J. Brown from eight catches for 180 and two touchdowns, which very well could happen on Sunday. I agree. I think it's going to be interesting. It, it, you know, this is a game that the Eagles should be favored in, but I think it's going to be more competitive than people think for sure, even though it's at home. I just, I don't know, in, in a league right now that's so unpredictable and everybody looks beatable, if a team has a good talent at quarterback, I think they have a shot. So we'll see what happens. Keys to victory coming up next. If the Eagles win, it's because of. If the Cardinals win, how would that happen? We'll get into that right next on Crossover Thursday, Locked On Eagles and Locked On Cardinals. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. They have the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small Small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Lockdown Eagles, Lockdown Cardinals. This is Crossover Thursday on the Lockdown Podcast Network. All right, Eagles Cardinals, 1 o'clock on Sunday at the link. The Eagles should be favorites. I think they're going to win this game, Alex. I think when you look at most matchups, they have the advantage. I thought they got back on, on some sort of right track on Monday against the Giants. They were much better on offense, way more balanced. The run game got back on track. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, they produce as they always do. Jalen Hurts just looked healthier, more explosive as a runner, too, which he really hasn't all year. He's been dealing with some injuries. So I thought, again, it was not the get-right game you'd expect against a not-great Giants team, but a step in the right direction. But again, Arizona has Kyler Murray. They've been competitive against good teams this year under Jonathan Gannon. Let's say, I don't want to do like a score prediction. Um, I'm going to do it this way. If the Cardinals win, it's because of this. Because they turned Jalen Hurts over. Sure. Like that's got to be it. Like, you know, the Giants the got thing. lucky. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, Jalen, uh, you know, the Giants got lucky when Dallas, Dallas Carter fell down and for the, the pick six that completely changed the, the landscape. That was a 14-point swing really quickly. Also, I don't know if you um, saw the turnover on the kickoff return, but it was one of the flukiest. Oh, yeah. Turnovers. Oh, I well. <laughs> yeah. It was like two guys ice skating and just they were just blindfolded. Ran into each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's true. That that didn't help either. Um, you know, turning Jalen Hurts over, but but the problem is, man, the Cardinals haven't had a sack in it <laughs> in a long time. I mean, I think we're going on four games now. The pass rush is non-existent, which is the worst thing for an inferior cornerback room. So I just don't see that. Like, I think let me pivot here. So obviously the turnover battle, you got to win the turnover battle. Like that's every game, you know, every week. Keys to victory, that's one of them. Kyler Murray needs to be absolutely incredibly special. Like, this needs to be a three-touchdown, 350-yard effort on the ground, through the air, doesn't matter. That's got to be it. They have to outscore. This This game has to be in the in the 50s, high 50s, for the Cardinals to win. This can't be like, you know, a 13-9 game. It, it, it wouldn't happen. The Cardinals don't have the firepower on other side. So this has got to just be a bonkers hammer the over game for the Cardinals to have a, to have a chance. I agree with you. That's what I wrote down too for the Eagles. It's you got to get pressure on Kyler Murray. You can't let him be special, just like you were saying. But on offense, again, it's frustrating because the Eagles have produced this. You know, I can say, and I think it's true, that they've taken a step back when it comes to play calling. Brian Johnson is nowhere near the play caller of Shane Steichen, who we see what he's doing in Indy with a backup yeah. quarterback this year. And he should maybe win coach of the year if the Colts make the playoffs. So again, they've taken a step back in that way. The run game hasn't been as good. Jalen Hurts has definitely taken a little bit of a step back. He's still elite, but not the player he was in 2022. So things are different, but 
they're moving the football still when it comes to yardage. Like, they're moving it up and down the field. The thing that's been hurting them more than anything, why they have had to deal with so many one-possession games, is because their turnover differential, they're in the negative this year, unlike last year. And the penalties, they got nine penalties against the Giants. That's how you keep inferior opponents in the football game. And that's how you give them chances late in the fourth quarter. So, for me, the overall theme, you already talked about turnovers, penalties. It's just stay out of your own way because there's no excuse. If the Eagles play a clean game, even if it's not this explosive, dominating performance, if they just play clean, they should beat the Cardinals by multiple scores. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, we've got, you know, a few minutes left here. I, I want to ask you about this. So the game, yes, probably going to be not very close. There's probably going to be a lot of points scored and, yep. you know, giddy up. I want to ask you about this because we've got two quarterbacks here that, one is a little bit further along in, well, he's, he's played, you know, longer in the NFL and he's dealt with injuries up until he tore his ACL, just like Jalen Hurts has. Jalen Hurts hasn't missed much time. I don't know how many games he's missed in his career. I'm not sure. But he missed I mean, he's two bigger. last year and one the year before. So was it Gardner Minshew? I, I can't yeah, remember who the back was. It was Gardner Minshew. Yep. So let me ask you this because, you know, revisionist history is, is what it is, but do the Eagles – this year specifically, rely too much on Jalen Hurts running the ball to bail out the offense? Or is it just – because, I mean, you're going to have those – I call them Russell Wilson runs, where it's just – you're going to get 20 chunk yards out of nowhere just because people are playing man coverage and you're getting four or five seconds to look down the field and they can't guard everybody. Like those kind of runs. Is Are you relying – are they relying too much on him – running the ball to move the ball down the field this year. Honestly, I would say, I think Brian Johnson, when it comes to his play calling, he's been too adamant on forcing the issue at times with design runs for Jalen. I think, you know, the ones outside of structure that's on Jalen, whatever he decides to do. But I think when you look at the actual production of those calls though, compared to last year, no, they haven't been able to rely on that. It hasn't been able to bail them out because he's had this bone bruise. I feel like it's been all year. We can even tell week one and two, like something's off with his mobility. Like Jalen will still, if it's third and seven, he'll get you those seven yards. But when it comes to those 20 plus yard runs, like last year where he runs through contact, he makes guys miss. Like he could be an ankle breaker. He's not a four, three, you know, speed type. He's not a Lamar Jackson type of mobile quarterback or even right. Kyler Murray, but He's very dynamic, and this year it really hasn't been the same. Again, he's been productive, over 500 rushing yards. He has set the record. It depends on if you agree with it or not because most of them were sneaks, but he has 15 rushing touchdowns this year. But honestly, Alex, like I think the play calling has relied on that, but the production hasn't been there. He's been more effective. I think he's bailed them out more from inside the pocket this year than anything. And so, yeah, I I think it's going to be – I will say, though, on Monday, that was the best he's looked running the football against New York all year and that they need that element because it's what's held them back a little bit this year compared to last year defenses aren't respecting that kind of threat as much yeah i mean it seems like at least from the run rush attack like the andre swift was you know fantasy darling through the first five or seven weeks and right. then like you don't miss miles sanders right like miles no, sanders I don't producing- think, no swift has the fifth most pat- rushing yards he's on pace to surpass a thousand yards but in the middle of the season it was so hot and cold because I think the Eagles, they didn't go back to really a traditional run style. It was still, they're trying to get defenses to respect Jalen's mobility. Like they were still playing as if it's 2022 and they had to accept that hurts right now, at least is not a hundred percent. Like defenses are not going to respect it as much. So I think that's what created some of that lull. I will say this Monday, the run game got back on track. They used a lot of pistol. Jalen was healthier and I think it made a hell of a difference. So yeah, I think it's again, been kind of a, just a, for everything with the Eagles. And I think the entire NFL is a very Jekyll and Hyde kind of vibe. I'm sure my listeners are sick of hearing that, but it's just been very up and down. Yeah. This is, this is the world post Tom Brady. Yeah. This, this I is, think that's just the reality of the league, man. It's just, I think it's like, it's just it's, different. It's or if, you, if you're an NBA guy, this is post KD Golden State Warriors NBA. It's just a free for all of parody. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, this is the NFL in transition of, because look at the, look at the NFL and the 32 quarterbacks right now. Name one who's above the rest right now. I mean, you, you want to say Mahomes, but this year, can you even say that? Not, not existentially. It's an existential crisis answering that question. Yeah, I agree. There's I, no huge gap like there used there's to be. Not, there's not. Like, Josh Allen's never – people haven't taken – it's like when, you know, Jordan retired or, you know, early on it's like, who's going to take the reins? Sure. Who's taking the key to the NBA or the NFL? And but Patrick Mahomes had a down year, even though they were going to make the playoffs and probably win the division. Like, 
Who's next? There are so many. You feel bad for Joe Burrow, but it's like Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert doesn't want it. Josh Allen doesn't want it. Like they all want it, but it's just like there is it, they're in that transitionary phase. And these young guys coming up, CJ yeah. Stratt, like guys that maybe we're in a very good spot for quarterbacks, but it's it's diluted and gone to a bunch of different teams and supposed instead of just having that three-headed monster with Peyton Breeze and and uh yeah, no, the variance. Uh, Brady Breeze and uh, Peyton, yeah. Yeah, I would say the variance is is a lot more extreme than it used to be, I think. But at, at the same time, you look at the 